Welcome to this webinar on e-commerce for treasurers. My name is Mariel Barkley, and I am one of the editors at Eurofinance, an economist group business. This webinar is part of the award-winning Global Treasury Leaders Program, which is sponsored by Deutsche Bank. The program aims to share insights and to connect treasurers around the world uh, with expertly curated activities throughout the year. And these activities include uh, summits in different regions, webinars like this one, white papers, interviews, and an online community where we host these webinars. The community is only open to corporates, which allows for candid conversations and exchanges from, uh, with treasurers from all over the world um, in a safe and secure space. I'm going to send you the link to join via the chat in a minute. Uh, feel free to, to connect. Uh, just remember to tick on the Global Treasury Leaders uh, community when you are prompted to choose which groups you want to join. But going back to this webinar, we would like it to be as interactive as possible. So please send us all your questions, as many as possible or as many as you want via the chat facility and uh, our moderator and speakers uh, will take them when appropriate, but uh, do it from the start when you think of them. Don't wait until the end or you might forget. So without further ado, let me please introduce our distinguished chair, uh, Sulaba Garwal uh, from Accenture. He's a managing director at Accenture and an expert in the field of payments. He's the global head of payments at Accenture. And Sulab, in turn, will introduce our speakers. So, Sulab, over to you. Thank you, Mario. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, E-commerce is changing, we all know, right? Um, Pre-pandemic, over the five years, uh, the digital commerce volume had doubled. During pandemic and expected by end of the year, it would have doubled again. Clearly, a lot is changing and uh, treasurers and other organizations have to keep up with it. So really look forward to the discussion today. Um, let me introduce uh, the panelists uh, uh, we've got. So we've got Killian from Deutsche Bank. Maybe Killian, you can say a few things about you, your, your role and what you do. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, the, thanks for the intro, intro and thanks for having a chance of being on the webinar. So Kilian, Kilian Talama from Deutsche Bank, um, um, Managing Director and Head of Merchant Solutions, means responsible for all acquiring, acceptance and issuing business within Deutsche Bank. Excellent, thank you. And uh, next we have Veselina uh, from the Richemont uh, Group. Veselina, welcome. Please, if you can say a few words about your role. Thank you very much. My name is Vasilina. I work uh, in uh, Richemont. Um, uh, I'm a treasury and risk director. And uh, currently I'm in charge of uh, a team dedicated to customer payment and services in a more B2C space. Thank you. And uh, last but not the least, uh, we have Wolfgang from Porsche. Uh, Wolfgang, if you want to do a quick introduction as well, please. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm looking forward for uh, this webinar today as well. My name is Wolfgang Rathauser. I work as a group treasurer for Porsche and uh, e-payment uh, becomes a very, very important part of our uh, strategy going forward as well. Uh, and that's why I'm here to discuss. Excellent, thank you. So why don't we start with the topic which is front and center of everyone these days and any conversation will be only half complete without talking about the impact of the pandemic. We all know the business has changed. We don't go to offices anymore. Some of our, us, the lucky ones, can work from home. We have been uh, using less cash, more repayments. Various things have changed in the world of um, commerce and payments. Maybe we can go around um, our esteemed panel and find out how has pandemic affected their treasury or their businesses and especially their treasury operations. What were some of the key challenges they have faced and how they have tackled it? Maybe Wolfgang, do you wanna uh, start, kick us off there? Thank you. 
Yeah, certainly. Thank you very much as well. I mean, uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, definitely was a challenging year for, for Porsche as well, especially in the, in the second quarter and the end of first quarter. We saw it already in the first quarter coming through China and in, 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 in downturn of the sales and then swapping over to Europe. And then, of course, uh, uh, from the treasury perspective, uh, we were heavily involved. Uh, from the e-commerce perspective, uh, we were fortunately already in a position where we had certain uh, strategies put in place uh, and uh, especially from the e-payment perspective, we were well equipped in order to support our businesses because uh, what we saw at that point of time that businesses came along and said, well, we need to do more in order to really support the business. And when we look from the dealership perspective, we have implemented uh, our e-payment solutions within uh, the German group, for example. And then there was, of, uh, of course, an in, uh, immediate need as well from other regions and other countries as well in order to do so. And especially when all the dealerships were closed in the second quarter and uh, we had to look into different uh, possibilities, how we actually can reach our customers. And that was uh, one of the uh, opportunities, how we from Treasury and as well from the e-payment perspective could actually support that as well. So. Um, E-commerce, uh, we were growing in this uh, area and when Porsche, as you all know, we are uh, sales, uh, we are a vehicle sales company, so we are selling uh, luxury uh, uh, and uh, uh, high premium cars, um, uh, sporty, uh, sportive cars, um, and uh, nevertheless, we, uh, these uh, uh, dealerships and uh, reaching the customers and how we can actually use them with advanced payments and how to support it throughout the crisis was a very big uh, importance for us as well. Yeah, no, I can I can well imagine. Um, maybe we shift gears and go more into core retail. I know Rishima is probably more uh, in the luxury segment as well, but Vasilina, it'll be good to hear from you. What were some of the challenges you faced and how did you go about addressing those? And especially if there were any global challenges in nature where there were certain geographies more difficult than than others yes uh, on our side uh, it's um, it's very similar to Porsche we already had obviously the e-commerce uh, strategy well uh, implanted as part of the group uh, uh, strategic direction and obviously with COVID it was uh, just a great accelerator uh, for some of our brands. We uh, basically multiplied by 10 uh, the e-commerce footprint uh, in the uh, kind of uh, in a few months. And because we are actually also a luxury but very much focused on end consumer, uh, basically it's kind of went beyond the e-commerce I would call traditional e-commerce uh, uh, space. Uh, uh, we really ended up in a lot of virtual interaction with our luxury customers, whether it was uh, virtual uh, uh, events, virtual uh, showrooms, uh, um, clienteling uh, via the social media. So all that obviously had a quite big impact. We had to react very quickly to put uh, again, payment solutions in place. Uh, which are not uh, compromising the luxury experience for us. It's very important, but uh, still to have the, the solutions quickly. I think one of the challenges which we had uh, over this year is that uh, on the treasury side, we had to balance, I would say, different speeds uh, from, you know, uh, from the business on one side. We really had to move very quickly on some uh, in some directions, even activating uh, business continuity plans uh, to, to really capture the payments and to be able to, uh, uh, to interact with the customers. But obviously on the other side, the challenge is that we need to be super mindful and super co uh, conscious of all the compliance issues. I mean, the PCI compliance, the, the cybersecurity, all the regulations. So we really had to uh, balance, I would say, a very kind of uh, um, multi-functional group of people with different, you know, agendas, different speeds, and, and take that into account as part of our treasury uh, um, operations. Of course, lots to do, lots to do. Um, uh, I know um, someone in the audience is asking a question, but we'll, we'll come back to it, James. But if Killian, if I can turn to you first, and if you can um, give a perspective from the payment service provider side, like obviously Deutsche Bank has gone through a big change 
uh, in its approach to merchant acquiring and providing e-commerce services uh, during and after the pandemic, or uh, I mean, I think we're still part of it. Um, how how are you um, uh, seeing the market and the changes as a result of the pandemic, and and especially with regards to e-commerce? Yeah, totally. And as as you mentioned, uh, Deutsche Bank had a is now changing its strategic approach towards payments, towards merchant acceptance and acquiring business. And I think a little bit the, pandem the pandemic and the changes which were triggered by pandemic from a business point of view, but also from a payment point of view, a little bit also changed our strategic opinion towards uh, merchant acceptance. Uh, that means we see now strong growth in that areas, everything which is digital, that means also everything which is digital payments is, is increasing quite fast. Um, we see on the one side there are big opportunities for us. Uh, we see also next to the general increase that the share of digital payments versus cash is now really moving towards toward, uh, digital, even in a cash-centric market like Germany. We see now a lot of, a lot of businesses okay, who say also point of sale businesses who say, okay, we cannot afford to, have a, to be a cash-only business. That means digital payments is a must for them. We also see that market players are changing their business models, not only increasing um, the share of digital payments, also new business models are, are arising. And now the pandemic is really forcing them to do that. That means on the one side, we see a lot of direct to consumer businesses right now for companies who had before a pure B2B or indirect approach, now going directly, which also means they need digital payments. We see a lot of platform marketplace-like approaches, which is part of the, the digital strategy of, from a lot of our customers. And this is what we want to support, where we think, okay, this is, this is, this is the way, or this is now the, the, the time where we, need, where we need to help them in this digital transformation, where we also see, okay, it's not only treasury services we need to provide there, it's a combination of treasury and acceptance businesses. This is where we see the added value from, from Deutsche Bank. Yeah, no, that that is true. Like I, I heard that fifty percent of all e-commerce traffic is now um, as part of the marketplaces, right? So clearly, the market dynamics are completely changing. Thank you, Killian. Um, maybe talking about um, the whole um, market dynamics and and moving to more B two C world. Uh, clearly, the consumer or the customer experience is quite important in this whole journey. And we always had the likes of Uber over the last few days, or even Amazon One Click, where the experience was fairly frictionless. And, uh, and a lot of the other organizations were looking to move in that direction to see how the, uh, from, from a customer experience perspective, the focus is less on payment methods themselves, but more on, on how you create a completely frictionless experience. It'd be good to understand how you are tackling this challenge um, in the e-commerce world as to how you're going about uh, thinking about frictionless payments. Maybe Vasilina, you can kick us off there in terms of uh, how Rishimon is, is doing that. Yes, I think uh, um, clearly uh, the consumers now really expect the uh, frictionless experience, as, as you said. And I think the uh, the payment has evolved from uh, kind of being perceived as a necessary step to process a transaction uh, towards more uh, kind of a way to engage with the with the consumer. I think also what we see clearly is the trend uh, uh, which is much beyond a payment. It's really about financial services, uh, uh, you know, uh, offering flexible payment options. Um, and basically, it, it's, uh, it's really about an ecosystem in which payment became an integral part of that customer experience. Uh, we focus very much on, on customer experience and on the seamless uh, experience of the payment. So we, we really speak uh, a lot with our business, with our digital colleagues, with our marketing colleagues to make sure that the, the customer experience is as seamless as possible. So it really became core of all our projects and it's always in mind. And we all obviously, as uh, I guess uh, many companies take inspirations from the uh, Alipay likes, uh, Uber likes, uh, uh, Apple Pay likes, where it's basically now really a lot about the ecosystem 
uh, there is uh, the uh, uh, kind of the border between mobile and e-commerce uh, um, disappearing. It's all kind of one uh, ecosystem where the customer can choose to pay, whether it's on mobile, whether it's on e-commerce, whether to come to the boutique, but still pay with the mobile. So we really uh, focus on what customer wants. And we also see a trend of localized uh, uh, customer base, obviously. So we are now looking uh, increasingly in offering local payment methods, not only the uh, traditional uh, payment method, but really what is the local specificities of each market uh, for the local clientele. Sure, thank you. Wolfgang, would you like to add um, from a Porsche perspective how you are looking at this challenge? Yeah, I can. Uh, I think I agree with Vasilina's point as well in this regards. Man, frictionless experience for a customer's perspective is extremely important. And uh, what we always discuss as well, and what we see is at the end of the day, it's very important that the e payment part and the payment is um, at the end, uh, that is basically the end of the customer experience that this is functioning. And sometimes it's totally undervalued uh, from, from, from the total value chain perspective, uh, how much really here um, customer uh, focuses on, on it as well. Because if you check out and you can't pay at the end and the whole sales doesn't go through and you lose a lot of potential uh, customers and volumes as well. And we see it already when we certain uh, changes in the regulation uh, phases with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, dual uh, uh, authorizations uh, that the authorization of the of the of the checkout is is basically going down and uh, that's one of the focus areas from the treasurer perspective that we make sure that's frictionless and that we support our customers that they can do that as well and was Vasilia, what Vasilina said as well is, is very important as well you can't actually capture and just uh, offer payment methods uh, they are global, you need to look, uh, you go local as well, whether it's in Russia or in China, for example, as well as a big customer base and how do we actually tap that that uh, um, area as well from, from our perspective. So we see that um, uh, very much in, in this, as an important step from our strategy perspective. But the other thing I think uh, it's very important and for us is uh, uh, from the business perspective, we have different businesses and we need to bring this business to, together so that the customer doesn't have to guide through different uh, uh, channels to really get uh, uh, the customer experience. So it must be an omni-channel capability and then the process management behind and their startup companies and new companies like Uber and Amazon, they are much better and they are just much more experienced. So we have here a step to go in order to execute that as well. Sure, thank you, Wolfgang. Maybe uh, on this last topic of omni-channel, Killian, do you want to expand that as to how the payment service providers are thinking about that and enabling um, their um, you know, corporate treasurers to be able to give the best service to their clients? No, to totally, and I would, I would agree on what, um, what Wolfgang and Vasilina said before. What, what we see also from the market and from our customer that that convenience is now is now key and is, is beating a little bit the, the old USPs that you know from the payment world, which was more or less trust, security. Now it's more convenience, which just makes the difference. It's convenience in different different angles. Convenience for the for the end consumer who is buying whatever. Uh, that means that means the process must be seamless. The, the, the payment method mix must be wisely chosen on the one side global versus local payment method, but on the other side, not 20 payment methods, maybe three or four are enough. Yeah? So because that is also uh, not convenient if you need to choose between 20 payment methods, so that's nobody wants to do that. And also having the same, same effect, not only in the buying process or purchasing process, also with, with, with uh, backend processes, the refund processes, the chargeback processes, same situation there. And not only for the end consumers, also for, for the treasurers. You have the same situation there. For treasurers, convenience is also key. For them, it must be easy uh, to bring payments and treasury services together. And I think also that, that omnichannel plays an important role there. Uh, because on the one side, I think that the, the, the omnichannel thing, I think end consumers are not thinking in omnichannel. Yeah? They're thinking in, oh, I want to buy stuff right now. I want to return stuff right now. I don't care if that's no mobile, web, whatever. It must be seamless. It must be convenient. And I think it's 
it's our job, mainly the job of the payment providers, but also the job of the of all the backend processes to make that make that possible. And that means we cannot think in channels anymore. We need to think in in, in processes. We should not care about e-commerce versus point of sale versus mobile. Yeah, that did not help our customers. That did not help us. And I think this is a trend that we see right now. Of course, of course. Thank you, Killian. I mean, just if I stay with you, Killian, I think something you said at the beginning is where you see the rest of the treasury services provided, like the cash management, uh, the other treasury services that you provide to the treasurer and the merchant acquiring services for supporting e-commerce. There's lots of synergies you see and how these things are coming together. Do you want to elaborate a bit more as to how you see the synergies between uh, those two services and how you see the treasurers taking advantage of the changing landscape. What I think and what also our, our thesis and our assumption from, from Deutsche Bank side is that in the past, the merchant acquiring business and the treasury business was more or less siloed business. Huh? So you have, you, you see it, they existing next to each other and there is an interface which is normally the payment and settlement piece where the acquirers are sending money to the treasurers but it's it's more or less not an integrated process and i think if you put this stuff together and make this as convenient as possible i think there's a lot of things for both sides to make the process better better which is at the end better for the end consumers that means instant settlement processes, instant reconciliation, no challenges on the on the FX side and things like that, making that more and more smoother, also helping treasurers to deal not, because in the reality, the treasurer is not dealing with one acquirer, so we, uh, they are dealing with tons of players in that market. Yeah? So uh, as, as we mentioned, uh, local payment methods are important. Yes, they are important, but that means sometimes new, new, new partners, new settlement processes, new reports, new reconciliation and things like that. And I think in that area, if you, if you, if you really look at end to end and not just, okay, that's the acceptance piece and that's the treasurer piece. I think this is, this is the value which will, which will now comes up and will now bring in the overall process um, a lot of chances, chances for everybody, and and, and at the end, uh, at the end, more business uh, because the opportunities for both sides are are, are big there. Uh, so it's not that e-commerce is just one process, uh, and it's more or less the smaller one. It's now become the more relevant one, and that means also the processes are much more important, uh, even in the back end. Yeah, no, that's that's in interesting. So, Vasilina, just picking up on that point and expanding further into operations and the new technologies and the tens of service providers which are there as well and everyone talking about cloud and cloud native and others plus there is these operations which are changing shape for you as e-commerce is picking up treasury operations as obviously needs to be streamlined how are you managing this whole capability challenge Yes, yeah, so uh, it's true that on uh, I mean uh, all these big shifts have uh, a major impact on, on treasury uh, uh, and finance uh, in general. I would say. Um, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to really look at the end-to-end -end, uh, value chain of the payments. So we are not only looking at the kind of checkout and front-end uh, customer-facing uh, aspects, uh, which are obviously uh, very important but we also look at the uh, back office, at the processes uh, behind, which are you know, there to support the business, to enable the business. And we uh, actually, for me, one of the key elements is really to go and to automate as much as possible these processes, to digitize these processes. Uh, so I think there are very interesting solutions now in the market, uh, which allow, uh, allow that, you know, with the either uh, RPA or machine learning, uh, smart technologies, we, which really um, help us to uh, kind of invest in this foundation, which is a, a, a smart technology-based modern, and which basically enable the growth in a kind of scalable and uh, uh, but speedy way as well. Mm. So on our side, it's really important to look at two angles. And in the mean, in kind of in the middle, uh, we are also looking at the whole risk management. I mean, uh, um, uh, we spoke about fraud management. Fraud management, you can look at it uh, in two ways. You can look at it from the customer perspective. You know, uh, you don't want to upset your customers because your tools are not very good, and you basically uh, 
decline transactions of genuine customers. It really impacts very badly the customer experience. Uh, but obviously, we want to protect the group from the, the real fraud and automate all the processes which are charge back processes, etc. Now you have really good technologies which can do that. Uh, and so we are looking at that, at that uh, perspective as well. Uh, so we really take the end to end view of uh, kind of from innovation, experience, compliance, uh, risk management, back office, uh, um, and data analytics. I think that's one element which is very important in all that because all these uh, new solutions and services generate so much data. And I think it's really important to leverage this data. Yeah, and maybe on the point of data, maybe Wolfgang, you want to expand on how you're looking at end-to-end -end data. Uh, um, in, yeah, in I, mean, I think it was a, it's a very, very interesting uh, discussion in this regards. And that's why a couple of years back, we already, uh, uh, from the treasurer's perspective, we approach and say e-payment is part of treasury and we need to drive this throughout the organization because at the end of the day, a few years back, everybody was saying, okay, well, we are doing e-commerce we need to approach our customer and the payment solutions are becoming very decentralized. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we put it under the head of treasury. And that was actually pretty unique, um, let's say three, four years ago when I talked to other corporate treasurers to say, well, e-payment is not part of our our responsibilities um, while it's uh, somewhere else in, in the organization or they didn't even think about it. And uh, uh, it's it's really going back to, first of all, streamlining, making sure that the data model is in place as well. And when you can start thinking on the, what Vasilina, Vasilina also mentioned as well to say, okay, what is the total value uh, chain? And I think it's very, very important end to end to our process to be implemented. But we started from the e-payment perspective and trying to, to go backwards as well and, and help them the finance organization in total in order to implement that. But um, for us, it was important to see how can we actually from the payment perspective really have a data model in place as well and how can we actually drive and, and what can we do with this data as well, giving back into the organization, uh, especially to the sales organization or even to, to marketing as well. And um, this is actually what's what's really currently going to change a lot. Yeah? I and mean, we have a lot of new data sources and these data sources are as, as long as you don't have a data model in place, um, is it very, very hard to really get the right uh, uh, yeah, solutions or the right uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, discussion points with the business where you can help them as well out of this data. So yeah. that's yeah, how I mean, we actually use that from the e-payment perspective and payment perspective. Yeah, I mean, now there's more data available, whether it is open banking or ISO 2022, or even the reporting and the data you can get from the PSP, you, are, you can feel like there's more data available. Now it's more about how do you use it and what Killian was saying, end-to-end -end reconciliations, various activities, whether they're operational or more market insight is quite relevant. Um, if I stay with you, Wolfgang, uh, I mean, one of the questions which has also come um, in the chat, and uh, um, and I think um, Killian mentioned most organizations uh, like yourselves, which are global, are dealing with multiple payment service providers, some more local payment service providers. How are you thinking about the governance um, of these multiple providers? Some of them, which traditionally used to be just banks, they were more uh, e easier or there were there was a established process to go back and now there are lots of fintech some small some large how are you managing this whole um vendor management or governance um uh, across the landscape yeah I man it's getting more complicated right in the past treasures were more related to finance organization to banks uh, related as well for credit uh, perspective to make sure that you have uh, from the corporate perspective enough credit in place but now we are dealing with uh, fintechs and you need to be very careful and as well thoughtful as well what kind of fintechs can support you and from the vendor management perspective when are they, are they having the right technology in place are they still out there in a couple of years or uh, do you need to think uh, what's going to happen with this technology and uh, we were very lucky and as well, we chose very wisely as well. Uh, one of our, our, our vendors uh, on the e-payment side, we were very happy and they cover very well uh, the globe. 
besides China. China is a bit a different uh, uh, sector. In our case, as we are growing on the e-commerce uh, part, uh, it's, uh, we started with one PSP and for China, we are having a bit of different strategy as well. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, the more we grow our business, we need to think about uh, whether we need to have a portfolio in place of vendors or uh, can we actually uh, just uh, stick to our current strategy. Uh, but it's getting more complex, and uh, but we are very happy with the vendors we chose. Sure, sure. Vaseline, do you want to give a perspective from, from a Yushimo side? Yes, I think it's actually, uh, I fully agree with Wolfgang, what, uh, what Wolfgang said. I mean, it, it be, it's becoming more complex, uh, that's for sure. I mean, uh, historically, our main counterparts were kind of banks, uh, uh, and now, you know, when you sometimes you speak to some companies, you are not even sure who are they, you know, is it a technology company? Is it a marketing company? You know, they're basically uh, sitting quite a lot on financial services because I think financial services offered to consumers, uh, they became kind of almost a baseline where a lot of uh, new players are popping up on, in that space. And you know it's it's not very easy to actually say uh, it's uh, it's a financial service provider sometimes. So it's uh, something which we are also working. So in our term, in kind of in our strategy for the uh, partnerships, we went from very fragmented patchwork uh, landscape. We really reviewed our partnerships and we did a lot of work to harmonize. We now have leading edge major players. But uh, we also see this uh, new fintechs coming very interesting, but we also need to be mindful about, uh, as Wolfgang said, you know, uh, how many out of them will remain in the market in three years even, you know, we are not even talking about five years. So we need to also have our treasury hat and really do the due diligence on this, um, on the suppliers, knowing that sometimes, you know, they are not even reaching to us because now they're tech technology companies, you know, they may come to marketing people, they may come to our digital people. And it's something which is, I would say, work in progress on our side. We are trying to put some uh, lightweight governance, if I can call it like this. We don't want to put really rigid rules, uh, but we really want to say, okay, we don't want to create un uh, unnecessary precedents, for example, you know, for, for suppliers, sometimes it's easy, you know, to divide and conquer. We try to explain that, you know, that uh, uh, we want to really build strong partnerships uh, in the long term. Uh, but it's, I would say, it's still work in progress in our side, on our side. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Everyone, one thing to add on here. I mean, uh, over years, we now develop really the e payment side. Um, my team developed here a really strong partnership as well within the corporation and the, and the group. And they know they, for e payments, they come to Treasury in order to get the support. Sure, sure. That's um, really clear. And, and Killian, from your perspective, how do you make it easy for the treasurers to govern? Like, have you got some thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, I think to make it easy, it's on the one side, I think it's a mindset thing to, to, to be open towards the treasurer, to be clear what you can deliver as a payment service provider, what you cannot deliver. Uh, so that's uh, because nobody, nobody is able to do everything, especially when you when you talk about global approaches and really, really international games. It's always having, uh, it's always be open to be, to be uh, to, to be smart on, on that side from two from two sides on the one side to say okay this is what can what can delivered uh, and this is what cannot be delivered that means also for the treasurer that a smart mixture of partners and suppliers is, 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 is key not to be defragmented but also not to have all eggs in one basket yeah? because nobody knows what happens in the future and a partner which is good right now could be not good in two or three years yeah? so this is always this is always the point and what does it mean on the one side, open from the business model point of view, open from the technology point of view, uh, because you don't know what parts of the chain you need, to, you need to cover. Could only be the treasury side, could only be the acceptance side, could be a combination, could be a specific, spe specific payment method or even specific features, uh, for example, uh, for an exchange handling. Uh, so that is a specific feature in the value chain, but sometimes this is, this is key. And sometimes you can, you can enter that and say, okay, I handle that. Uh, this piece of the of the chain, no matter who the acquirer is, no matter who the treasurer works in his process and things like that. And this openness is is, is needed um, 
to, to, to gain the most, the most value out of it. I did not believe in black box approaches to say, okay, this is the payment black box. You can take it or you cannot take it. And that's it. I think that is something from the past. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Transparency, openness, openness is quite important in the new ecosystem we live in, right? Otherwise, it'll be so hard to work with different organizations. I think um, come turning um, from current to future a little bit, um, there's lots of exciting developments happening, right? There is crypto, like uh, Tesla saying you can buy a car using crypto, PayPal allowing it at its checkout, Visa MasterCard also coming out supporting it. You've got uh, clearly central bank digital currency, which I would say is a close cousin of crypto and that's gaining momentum globally, like China obviously launching it, I think in, in Jamaica or some of the, um, um, I think even Thailand, like various countries are more um, ahead, Sweden, e-corona and various other things and others are also um, looking at it to see how, um, how they can uh, go about building say digital pounds or, or digital euros, for example. Um, um, on top of it, you talk about the whole open banking change. There is change happening with how you can pay and buy now pay later is quite active. Um, the whole QR code um, um, space is, is quite, um, it's, it's already a big thing in, in Far East, China and various other countries, but you can see that in Europe and other spaces as well, there is conversations there. Internet of Things is again uh, another area which, I mean, how you can, you people talk about connected cars, making payments um, from your refrigerator where it orders small things on its own. Maybe that's the world we'll go in five, five years, 10 years. Um, it'd be good to understand all of these various things which are going on. Um, what, what, which of these trends excites you guys, and you are actually seriously contemplating and um, and trying to work through your strategy through them. Maybe Killian, do you want to start us there? Yeah, happy to pick one because you, you list all all the important <laughs> buzzwords from the last from the last years, and that's they are complex one and a not so complex one. And let's let's try. Also, I will try to start to start with the, with the crypto side. And and you, you you mentioned a lot of players who are working now with cryptos. And I think it's important to have in mind what is always the trigger of using these crypto crypto like things. Yeah? So if you if you're mentioning Tesla, for example, for I think for Tesla, it's marketing. Now yeah? it's just a marketing piece to 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 use that it's it's fitting to their target group. It's uh, that's it. Yeah? So it's, it's generating buzz around it. Uh, the reason that we are talking about that is just a proof that that this, this strategy is, is, is a valid one. Yeah? You have companies like, like PayPal who, who, who are using Bitcoin more or less to be cheaper on the handling side of cash. It's just cheaper for them. Yeah? It's not, uh, so they're now evaluating that a little bit and bringing it, bringing it to, the, to the checkout process. But at the end, it's not, the reason is not paying with crypto. The reason is more that storing value in crypto is better than storing value in dollars or what, or, or euros or pounds or whatever. And I think that's their trigger. Huh? And then and then you have what you're mentioning on the CDPC side, uh, so that's, that governments are, governments are playing around with, okay, what can I do with that? Huh? Where, where is the value? What should I, which role should I play here? So that's really a lot of R&D going on in that. And in between, you have the underlying the technology layer, uh, all these blockchain-like things, who so brings value sometimes in combination with real crypto use cases, sometimes with really standardized use cases like settlements. So we are we are in a phase where this complex area of crypto is really, really still early stage, still 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 heating up. I, I believe in, I believe that there is something which will also triggers and change our our business as a as a payment provider it's too early to say in which in which area so that means openness and also playing around is important but not with a hundred percent focus on that crypto is everything because that's that, that that will be that will be not the case of course of course um i mean wolfgang maybe i come to you i mean maybe start with buying tesla with crypto but then which of these themes appeal to you and what are you doing about them 
Yeah, so I mean, as Kilia mentioned, uh, I think we are watching it very carefully as well. But uh, as a treasurer, you always, uh, well, me as a treasurer, I'm very, very conservative in, in, in certain areas as well. And on the crypto side in particular, uh, because I, I don't see currently the, 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 the point and the value from our perspective really to tap into that. We are watching it very, very carefully, but uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, compliance discussions as well, which are not tapped. And uh, we, from the branding perspective, we are need to be very, very careful not to harm our brand. Porsche has a very good reputation and an excellent reputation, and we don't want to go and, and get in touch with uh, money laundering issues and so on, which is currently uh, also used in through crypto uh, um, currencies. But nevertheless, I believe uh, with uh, uh, CBDC, as, as I just mentioned, so central bank digital currencies like China is uh, elaborating, I believe this will come very, very quickly. And we have uh, as well uh, uh, our uh, payment service provider, they, they, they are looking into that areas as well. And we are in close discussions in order to do so. But what drives us more and, and uh, as well is, is the request to pay especially because our 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 structure and our business is uh, we have our high value payments and uh, for that when a customer comes to our dealership and wants to drive with the car home today it takes days uh, we want to ensure that uh, in the future they can come in and say i want to have this porsche 911 i want to drive home 15 minutes later how can we actually uh, ensure that from the treasury perspective as well that the payment goes through and it's actually for compliant and there's no money laundering behind and it's fully traceable and and for that request to base uh, instant payment basically is really something we are looking forward in and into that uh, as well uh, if i would pick one which is more and uh, a current issue because how do you actually make sure that the information from the customer deck uh, desk uh, or from the sales desk goes really back into our back office and, and, and back office structure as well so that we have this uh, information seamlessly uh, traveling through our um, uh, processes. Yeah, no, request to pay is clearly very promising. How about this whole area of Internet of Things? And um, you can make lots of micropayments, pay for your fuel, for various things in the parking and others. How, how do you see that growing? And yeah. of things and 5G playing a role in that. This is all of where we all are looking into how we're going to do that in car payments. How do you actually make sure that when you as a car uh, or out of the car, you don't need to go somewhere and just uh, the car can pay uh, when you charge, for example. And in our case, we we started with the e-payment in particular with uh, the electrification um, strategy and bringing our own electric car, uh, Daikan last year on the market, and how we actually support and um, charging stations and, as you said, the, the eco system around that as well. Um, there's a lot of data also available and, and, and how we are going to harvest it and then bring this into place. We are working on that, but uh, we are not uh, fully there yet. Understood, understood. Marcelina, what's what's going on in your head? What Which of these trends are uh, kind of appealing to you and you're already working through them? I think on our side, I mean, crypto, um, more or less the same position as Wolfgang and for sure. Uh, we are obviously uh, fully aware of the trend, uh, but we are watching it uh, uh, for the same reasons. Uh, on our side, uh, we have uh, um, kind of the, the payment offers, which we, uh, which we are looking at are a lot driven by the by the uh, request from the customers. Uh, so uh, it depends also on, on the customer uh, kind of re uh, request, what they're looking for. What we have seen uh, over the last year is really a surge in uh, uh, buy now, pay later uh, um, kind of uh, landscape. Uh, it, it's really, I mean, it's something which I did not expect to be honest, uh, uh, even if we were already looking into that one year ago. It's something which really took off. Um, and basically for us, it's very interesting because it brings us uh, a very new, kind of different customer base. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we are engaging with new customers. It actually brings quite a lot of new customers. Um, I fully agree with Wolfgang about instant payments. What we, I mean, in our space, we can have uh, transactions up to a million or even more. 
Uh, and clearly, if you go into the kind of space of wire transfers where you need to receive it in two days, then reconcile, uh, confirm, etc., it's not always uh, very customer centric. And also, obviously, on the uh, back office side, it's, uh, it's quite complicated. So I think it's something which we will be looking at uh, the whole area of uh, instant payments. Um, uh, and I would say also one of the trends, and clearly it's kind of coming from China, but I think it will come everywhere, is the whole bi biometric, you know, when you pay uh, with your face, uh, etc. all the mobile payments, uh, the same. I mean, uh, our customers are really shopping a lot on the mobiles now. I mean, there is a lot of interaction in social media, etc. So the whole area of mobile payments is also uh, um, growing very quickly. Brilliant, thank you. I mean, a plea to the audience, so we've got 15 minutes left. We'll cover some of the questions here. If you have other questions, please write them down and uh, I'll look to pick them up. I think the first one is around the operating model within the treasury itself. I think we've touched on it. Um, it's about the role that treasury has in e-commerce. And is it, is it one, is it separate parts of the organizations, how integrated it is? And maybe um, Vaseline, while you're there, why don't you start to say, what's, how are you structured and how, are you, how do you think about um, the overall uh, operating model? So on our side, uh, we have uh, the treasury department, which has basically three pillars, uh, the kind of conventional, traditional treasury operations, uh, um, you know, the cash management, foreign exchange management. Uh, we have also the insurance. Uh, and now we have the newly uh, created uh, customer payment uh, pillar uh, as part of the, of the treasury uh, uh, team. I think the question is actually very important. I mean, it's true that on the customer payment side, uh, on one side, you kind of, you, you do have the treasury uh, um, uh, oversight, you know, you manage financial, uh, financial service providers, you are really involved in the compliance in the risk management. So there is a clearly a very strong link to, to, uh, to treasury. On the other side, the, the role evolved into this kind of horizontal, it's not anymore a vertical, it's now a horizontal kind of role where basically on a daily basis, we speak to uh, digital, to marketing, to retail people, to brand people. And, and it's true that you kind, of, you kind of can ask yourself a question, is it a typical treasury? Not, but it's maybe a new role of a treasury uh, to actually extend into that space and become real business partner, strategic partner to the business. Yeah, vertical to horizontal. Uh, Wolfgang, how are you structured, and how how do you? What pillars do you see in your organization? It's very interesting because we have a huge uh, discussion right now as well how the future organization in total is is actually looking at uh, more really from uh, the agility perspective that we are agile enough uh, in order to support our businesses. But uh, we are pretty, so far we are pretty classically organized as well with uh, operations, with a strategic uh, middle office and then uh, front office from the FX and uh, from that, uh, that perspective. And our e-payment, uh, we organized it under the um, operations uh, part because payments at the end is uh, it's always the backbone of treasury. And it was basically the connection as well and the interface towards banks. And now of the e-payment side is just uh, on the other side. Uh, it's, it's not totally on the other side, it's the customer side, but the payment inflows is the OTC channel. And in the past, the OTC or the, the order to cash came through, through the banks as well, but now it comes to an, 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 a different way. And there's a lot of uh, treasury related topics as well uh, towards to it. It's regulations, it's global, it's basically infrastructure driven and then there's a risk management behind as well uh, because you have uh, to deal with FX at the end of the day as well and um, um, so that's why we positioned it basically in our operations uh, in order to make sure that uh, uh, from, from that angle uh, we have covered it well but uh, what Vasilina as well mentioned is uh, we are very much interlinked and working very very closely together with because it's OTC is it's order to cash with our sales department and, 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 and have really here a very, very strong linkages, which normal treasury is much more strategic 
um, department and uh, has a bit of different uh, focus uh, where the, the direct linkage and inter, inter, uh, uh, dependencies with, uh, with the business is, uh, is normally less. And this is actually really a step in, in that direction. Yeah, Maybe you. just one thing on, on my side to add on that uh, evolving operating model and evolving role of the treasurer or treasury uh, team. Uh, I think it's very interesting to see the impact on the uh, skill base, which we are now having in the team. I mean, it's clearly there is a shift uh, between a really traditional finance background to people who are technology, have a very strong background in technology, very strong background in uh, project management. You know, they're obviously super finance literate, you know, they, they really understand the modeling, but it's not only about finance anymore. And I think it's, it, it's really interesting to see this new blend of the skill base, uh, which we, uh, we actually have now. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's a very interesting evolution to see as part of the treasury uh, function. Yeah, I know. Maybe, maybe to add, maybe to add to that, a couple of years ago we said, okay, we have people they are really uh, finance know-how, and then you have people they have IT or data science know-how. I think we need to in treasury here we need people they have basically both, and that's very very important because at the end of the day you need to understand the concepts because treasury is not the operations. You work very closely together with the IT because they are programming it and where they are putting it in, in place. You're working on the other side with sales people as well, and then you have the external and the global view on on that and the regulations comes in as well. So you need to have a really uh, a very diverse uh, skill set in order to support that. Yeah, and it's it's also interesting from, from our side as we as we are talking towards treasurers and we also see and we want to position now the payments and the e-payment space more also through our through our treasury channels. And we see companies who are really bringing that, that together. They said, okay, payment and treasury is one piece, not two pieces. But there are still a lot of companies who really have the silo stuff. I right? said, okay, payments is nothing has nothing to do with treasury. That's our that's more on the business side, no? yeah. especially when it comes to e-payment. The treasury has the the more or less old um, so the, the the classical structure starts when the money is there and not not before. And I think that is evolving right now, not fast, but step by step, this comes more and more together. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, even in Accenture, we've taken payments out from just financial services to make it a cross-industry payments practice. So you can see everyone is evolving because the, the whole payments market is changing. Um, I think there's a, I mean, there's a couple of questions on controls and actually um, the last question which has come in has brought together control and agility. Um, I, I Probably be good to get your thoughts. How, how have you balance the need for control and agility. So as many new players do not seem to have traditional controls we consider as basic with traditional banks. I mean, whether that's true or not, but clearly I, I definitely the balance between control and agility is there um, all the time. How are you working through the, uh, the push that everything needs to be agile, everything needs to be um, working at speed um, and and delivering multiple products to the clients every week or every day. Uh, how do you balance that with you know having good controls and good delivery? Maybe Killian, you can start and go to. Yeah, I think that the topic of controls is a is a tricky one because controls, per definition, is nothing which which is agile and nothing nothing which is which is fast. Uh, what 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 we see coming really from the from the banking angle that it's that it's easier and better to put from a from a banking perspective, controls into a payments world than the other way around. Yeah? And I think uh, so because it's it's easier to be a little bit more flexible than than being a little bit more non-flexible, which is needed when you when you're entering the the, the banking world, the world. But yes, it's 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 challenging, especially when you look when you look uh, into a global market. Uh, these different type of speeds, these different type of requirements in, in, in different markets and bringing all that together to 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 map it to your own capability and to your own to your own way of how you can deal with this uh, very complex market. It's, 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 really, it's really challenging, especially when you are a global bank who, who learned over the last year that controls are important, that processes are important, that governance is important, uh, which is sometimes a direct conflict to that what happens on the market. Uh, and that is not always easy to communicate and transfer it also to the customers that they understand, okay, we need to deal 
the, the following controls. Otherwise, we have a problem, and then maybe also the customer has a problem. Understood. Maybe Vaselina, it'll be good to get your take on this as well. Well, I think on our side, the way, at least uh, from um, a central uh, perspective, um, we are not controlling. You know, what we did uh, uh, is we spend a lot of time on the governance and kind of accountabilities and roles and responsibilities. We focus mainly, I would say, on principles, on the framework, on the, uh, you know, uh, the, the business rules, but I would say lightweight business rules, you know, like uh, absolute no-go. Uh, then we have obviously the structures in the regions and we really make sure that they understand this RACI, you know, the roles and responsibilities and that they are accountable to be compliant uh, with the local regulations, to be compliant with internal controls. We have the whole team um, then monitoring that. Uh, uh, but I would say for me, it's more about, it's not really about controls, it's more about balancing things like agility versus even synergies now, you know? We used to be so much focused on synergies, optimization, and now we see actually there is quite a trend to, towards decentralizing, decentralization, and I think sometimes agility actually prevails on synergies. That's what the, a trend which I see, uh, but clearly there are some absolute no-goes like compliance, like cybersecurity, like data protections, and we focus really on this kind of major no goals. This really needs to be done and compliant and assessed. Uh, but the rest we have, I would say, more kind of guide the book framework and RACI. And we really make sure that the local markets are accountable for that. Sure, sure. Wolfgang, anything else you would like to add? Yeah, I think Vaselina uh, has mentioned uh, most of it already. I, 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 I always come from that angle and this is how I'm trying to push that through as well. And Borsche is as long as you have a product to offer, the businesses are coming to us. And sometimes we don't have anything, uh, then it's difficult. And then and they are doing their own thing because they need to be quick, they need to be supportive, they need to make sure that the uh, customer centricity and, and, and they support the customer from, from that angle. On the e-payment side, we could actually help here a lot of our businesses. So they come to us and, uh, and we are more from the governance perspective as well, guiding. But of course, you know, you, you can't always cover everything. So you need to be a bit open uh, where you uh, need to, let's say, uh, leave the, the markets then uh, a bit of leeway as well. But on the other hand, it comes back to a data model as well to see the more data we get together, the more we actually can utilize out from this as well and and, and derive some models uh, going forward. And thank you. I think this has been a fascinating discussion. Maybe if I can have the one line concluding sentence from all three of you on what you would like people to take away in the moving, uh, the fast changing world of e-commerce and the role of treasury in that. Um, um, if I can start with Killian, maybe you can you can summarize. I think two two sentences or two 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 aspects. Aspect number one, the payment world, especially in combination with treasury, is really really exciting and coming coming out of the let's let's more or less boring backend services. There's really a business relevance on that, and that's a really something which 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 can add value. And um, that's that's number one. And, and number two, we should we should step out of the silos and bringing together. Uh, the the value to the company uh, to the to the customer not only between treasury and payments also in all the other business function because I think that is key and that help at the end everybody. Thank you, Vaselina. Right on, on my side, I think obviously there are a lot of lessons, but uh, if I can pick one, um, it's I would say really this. Uh, we, we obviously have to invest in new capabilities for sure in new solutions we shall enable the business. But I think we shall also never forget the foundations because uh, you know, uh, if you don't invest in your foundations, if you keep your processes manual, uh, you know, you, the plane will just not fly basically. So it's really have these both hats, uh, innovation and foundations kind of be integrated. Thank you. And Wolfgang? Yeah, I mentioned it a couple of years back, I think from the treasury perspective, I think uh, it's really important that you get your head around and uh, understand what does it mean as well from 
the business perspective, how is your business model going to change and is uh, uh, e-payment in particular um, supporting the business in the future? And that will be because we are getting there. We saw this uh, through COVID, uh, how the push came forward. And uh, the next 10 years will be super exciting. And uh, e-payment is, uh, is an absolute growing and fantastic uh, market with a lot of new technologies coming in. So we need to get into that and really learn along the curve. Uh, we are just, let's say, uh, at the starting point, I would say. Thank you. I mean, it has been a fascinating discussion. Really appreciate all your input. Um, maybe I'll hand over to Mariel to close. Thank you so much, Sulaba. Indeed, before we go, I would like to say a few things and, and give you some information on the upcoming activities. So please let me first thank Sulab, of course, for chairing this session and to all the speakers for sharing their best practice in this space of e-commerce. I would also like to thank Deutsche Bank for making this event possible. And finally, thank you all for being here. I hope you found the session helpful. Uh, please feel free to continue this conversation with the speakers and your colleagues at the Global Treasury Leaders Community. Uh, you can join using the link that I've shared uh, in the chat uh, facility. And in there, you'll be able to exchange uh, experiences, chat uh, with treasurers all over the world, as well as accessing all the contents that we produce for this program. Um, the next webinar will be uh, on the third week in May, and it will be about liquidity management, uh, in particular um, on investing in this uh, low interest rates environment. So very topical. I, and I really hope to see you there. Thank you very much again for participating and hopefully until soon. Bye bye.